Hello everyone and welcome back. So last class we learned the most important calculational tool for the homology groups, the meyer via torres sequence, and we saw some examples where we got very quick results out of the fact that many of the groups in the long exact sequence were zero. But of course this won't always be the case, and when that's not the case you have to get your hands dirty with the uh, maps in the long exact sequence. So this class we're going to get into some more detail on what those maps are, and we're going to do some examples that show them in action. So let's get to it. So here's our setup. Uh, we have our space X decomposes a union of two spaces, A and B. Then we get this little diamond of inclusion maps. A intersect B includes into A, and it includes into B. And A will include into X, and B will include into X. And from that, we get this long exact sequence uh, with this mysterious map boundary star. So the maps, I star, J star, K star, and L star, all come directly from inclusion. And so it's usually straightforward to figure out what those maps are, though, though the images in the groups can be a little hard. Um, so on the other hand, the map boundary star was defined sort of algebraically using uh, the zigzag lemma. So the first thing I want to do is uh, we want to understand boundary star geometrically. So let's remember that uh, boundary star goes from hn of x down to hn minus 1 of the intersection of a and b. So we need to take an n cycle that's something in hn of x and return an n minus 1 cycle in A intersect B. So here's how that goes. Uh, suppose Cn is some n cycle in X. By barycentric subdivision, for example, you don't have to do it this way, but that's one way. Uh, we can break up Cn into a union of, or let's just call it a sum of simplices contained entirely each of which is contained entirely in A or B. So this was the idea behind this use small homology that we used to uh, get the meyer via torres sequence. So it's no surprise that it's showing up again here. Let me just uh, draw a picture so we can keep track of everything. So here is a set A. Here is a set B. So their overlap does not need to be connected. That's not a condition of Meyer via torus. Uh, and so here is an N cycle. Sorry. Uh, 
Actually, let's put the base point right over here. So, uh, what I can do is break this up. So this whole thing is CN. So I'll call these CNA and CNB. That's a sum now. So the, the notation is a little misleading, but it's, it's a sum of simplices. Here it's actually just two simplices. There's one on the left and one on the right. Uh, so, well, the boundary map on CN is zero, right? That's the assumption that it's a cycle. Uh, but that implies that the boundary of CN of A plus CN of B, because CN is the sum of CN of A and CN of B, this is zero, which of course uh, implies that the boundary of CN A is equal to minus the boundary of CN B. And so what we conclude is that the boundaries of these simplices must lie oops, in A intersect B. Okay, so we define the boundary star of CN to be equal to the homology class of the boundary of CNA. And this is an HN minus one of A intersect B. Now, since I said it was an HN minus one, you need to be a little careful. The boundary map of this needs to be zero, but it's already a boundary. And if you do the boundary twice, you get zero. So there you have it. It is some element of homology. So for example, in this picture here, the boundary star of CN is equal to, uh, well, let me just draw it in a picture. It's the boundary star of this subdivided piece. And it's just those two points here. So I'll draw it in red. Actually, red is something in A. Let me just draw it in green. So these two are boundary star of uh, CN. Now, as a mathematician, your, uh, your canonical senses should be tingling because we made a choice here. So, no, we have made a choice in choosing to take boundary CNA instead of boundary C and B. Uh, in this case, they're sort of equal, but uh, they're not exactly equal, they're negatives of each other. Uh, so these maps are negations of each other. So while the map on the chain level depends on uh, which space we call A or B, or I, I suppose it's not really, it's, it's not the map on the chain level, it's the map in the Meyer-Viatoris sequence, 
depends on which space we call A and B, the resulting groups, homology groups that we care about, do not. And why is this? Well, this is since the image and kernel, that's all we care about, right? We're, we're working with these exact sequences and what we care about is their images and kernels of, of a map F is equal to the image and kernel of the map negative F, right? If F sends you to zero, then negative F of, of that thing is F of negative. You can work it out. It's not too bad. Great. So we have an understanding of all of the maps involved in the Meyer Viatore sequence. Let's compute some examples. So let's start with some surfaces. Let's calculate the homology groups of uh, T2 uh, for all of the homology groups. So to do this, I'm going to need to choose some decomposition of T2, and there are many valid choices, and each one gives you a little bit of different insight into the homology groups, but I'll take what I think is the standard decomposition. So let T2 be equal to A union B, where, okay, I'll draw it first, and then I'll describe it. We've seen this decomposition before. Here is A, and then everything sort of outside of here is going to be B. So A is equal to a um, All right, the way, the way it went in my notes is, is the other way around, so I'm just going <laughs> to be consistent with that. Sorry. So A is uh, T2 minus a small disk. And B is equal to a slightly bigger disk. Now... Thankfully, we actually know the homology groups of all the pieces involved. Now, A is homotopy equivalent uh, to the wedge of two circles. B is homotopy equivalent to a point. It's just a disk. And A intersect B is homotopy equivalent to a circle. So let's write down what the homology groups are here. So Hn of A is Z plus Z for N is equal to one. So we can, we know the homology groups of a circle and Using an easy Meyer via torus sequence, you can figure out the homology groups of a wedge sum. So it's z plus z if n is 1. It's z if n is 0, and it's 0 otherwise. Hn of b is z if n is equal to 0, and it's 0 otherwise. And Hn of a intersect b is equal to z if n is 1 and 0 otherwise. So there we have it. That's most of the information we need. Uh, let's knock out some easy cases. If n is greater than or equal to 3, then the Meyer via Torres sequence looks like... Okay, so I need uh, h3 of the intersection, but that's zero. And then I need H3 of the direct sum of A and B, and H3 of everything involved is zero. 
And then I'll have H3 of the torus, or it should be Ns for N greater than or equal to 3. Just thinking of them as 3 because that's easier on my brain. Uh, so that's Hn of T2. And then I come down to like H2 or Hn minus 1 of the intersection. And that'll be 0 as well. And then Hn minus 1 of the direct sum. And that's also 0. Okay, so this... Anytime you have a zero on the left and the right of two groups, that's telling you those groups are isomorphic. In other words, Hn of T2 is isomorphic to zero. So Hn of T2 is equal to zero for n greater than or equal to three. Awesome. Now, uh, how about if n is equal to two? If n is equal to 2, then the Meyer-Viatoris sequence looks like... All right, so uh, first of all, I'll have h2 of the intersection. So maybe I'll copy these, these groups down so we can keep track of them. Okay, at n is equal to 2, I have uh, h2 of the intersection, which is h2 of the circle, which is 0, uh, to h2 of the direct sum, also 0, and then h2 of t2, and now boundary star is going to take me down to h1 of uh, the intersection, and that is z because the intersection is a circle. Uh, and then I'm going to go into H1 of the direct sum. Now, this is going to be H1 of A, that's Z plus Z, direct sum H1 of B, which is 0. So this is really just H1 of A. All right, let's see what we can figure out here. Since uh, H2 of the direct sum is equal to 0, H2 of T2 injects into Z. Right, so the image of one map is the kernel of the next map. And so since the image of H2 is 0, the kernel of that boundary star map is going to be 0, a.k.a. it's an injection. So whatever this H2 of T2 is, it injects into Z. That already limits the options a great amount. If we want to understand what, uh, what the image of this map is exactly, we're going to need to understand the kernel of the next map. So this is I star direct sum J star. Now, J star is, well, clearly zero because it lands in a zero group. So since it lands in H2 of B, which is zero. Uh, now, I star, we're going to actually need to think about what happens. So uh, this is the map given by inclusion on this annulus. So I take this circle, which generates H1 of the intersection, and then I'm going to include it into here. So that's I star. And now when I include it, uh, it runs around A, uh, let's do it this way, A, B, 
A inverse, B inverse. So I star of the generator, which I'll call one, is equal to A, B, A inverse, B inverse, inside of the homology of the wedge of two circles, which is Z plus Z. But remember, homology is this abelian theory. Everything is abelian here. And so I can permute things past each other. And so this is zero. Well, what does that mean? So I took the generator and it got sent to zero. So I star is also the zero map. Therefore, the kernel of I star directs um, J star is equal to uh, the whole group, but this is an exact sequence. So the image of boundary star, the previous map, is also equal to Z. But remember that this map was an injective map. So the group H2 of T2 is equal to its image under this map. So since uh, boundary star is injective here, we learned that H2 of T2 is equal to Z. Great, so we figured out all of the higher homology groups, there's only one group left. There's also H0, which we know is going to be Z. All right, now at uh, n is equal to 1, the Meyer-Viatori sequence looks like... So I'm going to have h1 of the intersection. The intersection is that circle, right? Down to h1 of the direct sum. Now, h, uh, we've seen this portion. This is z plus z coming entirely from that wedge of two circles. And then I'll go down to h1 of t2. Uh, down to uh, H0 of the intersection. The intersection is connected. It's a circle, so this is Z. And then finally, we might not need this group, but this is H0 of the direct sum. Now let me give all of these maps names. F, G, H, and I. So what we've seen is that F is exactly the zero map. Well, the image of one map is the kernel of the next map. So that means the kernel of G is equal to zero which implies that z plus z injects into h1 of t2. So that might be the whole group. It might not be the whole group. Let's see if we're missing anything. Let's find the kernel of this next map. So uh, let's actually start with that map i. Now I takes, so this goes from the zeroth homology of the intersection into the, by like I star direct sum J star, it takes one to one plus one. And why is this? Uh, let me just <laughs> draw this picture again. Basically the generator of H0 here is any point. And if you include that into any side, you're going to get the generator of, uh, of either side. 
In particular, I is injective. Well, uh, if I is injective, that means that uh, the image of H is equal to zero because let me just image of H is the kernel of I, which is zero. Uh, okay, well, the kernel of H is therefore the whole group And so <laughs> the image of G, the kernel of H is the image of G. So the image of G is the whole group, but we've learned that G is an injective map. And so Z plus Z is exactly the first homology of T2. And then also H0 of T2, it's a connected space, is Z. And there we have it. We know all of the homology groups of T2. So in summary, H1 of T, oh, Hn of T2 is equal to Z plus C if n is equal to 1, z if n is equal to 0, and 0 otherwise. Great. Now let's try another surface. So let's calculate the homology of the Klein bottle. And I'll uh, call it K as an abbreviation. All right. So again, we're going to need to start with a decomposition. So let A and B be as in the picture. So what I'll do is... Well, first of all, let's get our arrows right for the Klein bottle. Two of them match. Two of them disagree. So this is A. This is B. Uh, and I'm essentially just going to split this in half. So here's sort of half of the surface plus a little bit. And then I'm also going to take this piece here. Let's just go ahead. So let's call this one A and this one B. All right, so let's look at the intersections here. Then, uh, well, I claim it's not too hard to see that A is a Mobius band. What you do is, I mean, let's look at the picture. I'm told to take this strip and then put a half twist in it. Right? Okay, also, B is a Mobius band. These, these sets look different, but they're really related by this translation. Imagine moving the set A just over to the left. It'll pop out on the other side and it'll look a lot like B. So really, 
A and B are, are, are basically the same thing. B is also a Mobius band. And here's one that's a little trickier to see. A intersect B is also a Mobius band. Uh, first of all, let me just convince you that it's connected. So here's what A intersect B looks like. It's these two strips. What looks like two strips on the picture. But remember, I'm going to draw on the original picture here. Like this orange dot is identified with that orange dot. And this purple dot is identified with that purple dot. So if I were to uh, like take a trip out of the top of that piece over there, I'd hit the orange dot, pop out back here. And then when I hit the purple dot, I would pop out back here. So this thing is connected. And uh, basically what you end up doing is just stacking them on top of each other. Um, okay, so now let's uh, look at their homologies. So then HN of all pieces is equal to, remember the Mobius band, let me draw it like this. We'll use this picture again. Uh, So there's the Mobius band, and then there's this red circle here in the middle. And if I just squish everything down, I see that the Mobius band is homotopy equivalent to the circle. So uh, it's Z if N is equal to zero or one, and it's zero otherwise. Okay, now, Exactly as before, uh, HN of the Klein bottle is equal to zero for N bigger than three. It's super easy to see. You'll have zeros everywhere in the Meyer via Torres sequence. The only thing you don't know is HN of K, but if, if your group lands in like a C of zeros, it's zero. Okay. The interesting one starts at n is equal to 2. So at n equals 2, we have 0. This is uh, h2 of the direct sum going to H2 of the Klein bottle coming in by boundary star to H1 of the intersection. The intersection we've seen is homotopy equivalent to a circle. Uh, yeah, I just squish everything down like this. And so uh, what you get here is Z. And then into H1 of the direct sums, each piece is a Mobius band. So each piece has first homology equivalent to Z. Okay, so whatever, uh, whatever H2 of K is, that zero on the left tells me that it injects into Z. So if I want, so that H2 of K is equal to its image of boundary star. So H2 of K is equal to the image of boundary star. And the image of boundary star, uh, we'll just call this I for inclusion map, is equal to the kernel of this inclusion map. It's like a double inclusion map, right? And so we need to figure out how each of the uh, how that green circle up here includes into each of the pieces. Well, 
so call i is given by including this green circle into A and into B. So what happens when I include this into A? Well, uh, here was A. And so you can see that the green circle is homotopic to the boundary of the red piece. The boundary of the red piece is that boundary of that Mobius band. So since uh, green circle is the boundary of red Mobius band, and remember that the Mobius band has the boundary wrap around the generator twice, right? So I guess that should have been green, but that's okay. Um, yeah, when, when you contract, the circle wraps around twice. So in the end, I star takes one, two, two. And similarly, If you look at the blue piece, now just by homotoping a little bit the other way, uh, J star of one is equal to two. So I star plus J star of one is equal to two. Uh, sorry, two, two. And what's the point here? Well, then uh, okay, I called this map I before, but I mean it really is I direct sum J, of course. Uh, so let me just call it also I direct sum J up here. So then I direct sum J is injective, aka the kernel of i plus j is zero, but the kernel of i plus j is equal to h2 of k. So h2 of k is equal to zero. Great. Now let's work on the h1 piece. Uh, so at h1 of k, we have the following. That's the intersection, uh, and then I'll have z plus z, that's h1 of a, h1 of b, to h1 of k, and this is going to map down to z, h is going to take me to z plus z, so let me give these maps some names, I'm going to call this one f. This is the boundary star map, and the last map is going to be called H. All right, so since A intersect B is connected, subdividing any loop oops, uh, into smaller loops. So I, I want to know what's happening on boundary star. I have to do the subdivision. Uh, this is going to result in an even number of uh, points in, uh, in the same component. For just like a quick example, here's a Klein bottle, make the identifications the right way. And 
you know, I, I have some loop here, which I want to break up. Okay, let's break it up here. So uh, that piece lives entirely in B. This piece is going to live entirely in A. And the point is that here in A intersect B, I have an even number of points and they're the oriented boundary of this, uh, this edge. And so they're going to cancel when I do this boundary star map. So the boundary star equals zero, which is going to imply that uh, F is surjective. Right, the uh, image of F is the kernel of boundary star, but since boundary star is zero, the kernel is the whole map, so F is surjective. Okay, so that means that H, H1 of K is surjected onto by Z plus Z. Okay. Uh, and whenever you have a surjection of groups, you can do this first isomorphism theorem that we've used a bunch. It's z plus z mod the kernel of f. All right, so we need to learn what z plus z mod the kernel of f is. Well, the kernel of f is equal to the image of g which we've already calculated. Uh, G, <laughs> I called this I star plus J star before. And uh, this is Z plus Z mod the span of the vector two, two, right? When we included that loop into each piece, it included into twice the generator on each side. And so we knew that, like, the generate it was a generator of a cyclic group, and so the, the group spanned by it is the span of the image of one, which is a span of two two. All right, now uh, we'll do like a little change of basis here. You could basically do Smith normal form here, but that might be overkill in this situation. Z plus Z is usually given as the span of one zero and zero one, right? But it's also, I could choose another basis for z plus z, which is the span of one zero and one one, okay, which I'll just call z zero one. So that's a copy of z, direct sum z one one. And now I can more clearly see what this quotient is. So z plus z mod the span of two two well, the span of 2, 2 never hits the first sum n, the span of 0, 1. And so, oh, span of 1, 0. It's equivalent. I could have done it either way, but let's be consistent. So it only hits that second component. So it's like z, 1, 0, mod nothing, because it's not in there. Mod z, 1, 1, mod the span of two, two. So I took the generator and I mod it out by twice the generator. This group is isomorphic to Z plus Z mod two Z. You could have also seen this by abelianizing the fundamental group, but I actually think this is maybe even a little easier than that uh, abelianization business. All right, so in summary, we now know all the groups. Uh, HN of K, the Klein bottle, is zero if N is greater than or equal to two. It's Z plus Z mod two Z if N is equal to one, and it's Z if N is equal to zero. Great, so uh, we know how to deal with surfaces. And similar things that we did for the torus and the climb bottle will work for the higher genus orientable and non-orientable surfaces.
Now, this last example I want to do is uh, I'm going to be a little... Uh, I'm not going to give all of the groups, but I want to highlight something, which is that you don't always get the... You're not always after the space X in the Meyer via Torres sequence. Sometimes you want to learn about the subspaces A and B. So recall that uh, if K is a knot, okay, so we had previously defined a knot in R3. If you just add a point at infinity to R3, you get S3, and the, knot, the theory of knots is exactly the same but it's actually what's more commonly done in math. So I'll, I'll switch over to S3. So if K in S3 is a knot, then pi one of S3 minus K is a powerful invariant of that knot. All right, so pi one tends to be a very difficult theory. So here's a hope. How does H1 of S3 minus K fare as a knot invariant? Well, let's, uh, let's use the Meyer via Torres sequence to figure it out. So by our definition of knot, We insisted that it could be broken up into these little polygonal pieces, nothing too crazy. And the reason you like that uh, is a knot can be thickened up to an embedding of S1 times D2. So just a very simple example. Here's a knot, and then there's, at, at each point of the knot, there's this little disc around it. And if you take the discs going all the way around, you get this solid torus. So just to be clear, this curve bounds a disc. This is S1. This extends to S1 cross D2. All right. so. Given a knot k, let nu of k, this is supposed to stand for neighborhood of k, be a slight thickening of k. And also, let nu plus of k be a slightly larger thickening of K. So I have K and then I'll have this is new of K slight thickening and this might get a little gross but <laughs> there's new plus of k just slightly larger okay now uh of course s3 is new plus of k which i'll call a union S3 minus nu of K. So cut out the small neighborhood and then union in the fatter neighborhood and that's everything. But you, of course, double counted. Uh, the intersection, A intersect B, maybe you could see this from the picture. Uh, there's, there's a couple ways to see it, but it's, it's going to be T2 cross I. 
like when you're growing S1 cross D2, you're filling it out by these tori. And then if you keep going out farther and farther, uh, you fill it out by more tori, and that's the extra stuff that it, that's in new plus that's not in new. So A intersect B is uh, equal to T2 cross I, which is, of course, homotopy equivalent to T2. So uh, let's just look at the meyer viatora sequence at level one. So at n is equal to one, the meyer viatora sequence is. So what I want to learn about is H1 of S3 minus nu of k. That's the thing we computed the fundamental group of, which gave us so much information about knots. So at n is equal to one, uh, I get, well, first of all, this is H2 of S3, and it maps down by boundary star to uh, Z direct sum Z, that's H1 of the intersection, the intersection's a torus, down to H1 of A. Okay, what is H1 of A? Well, A is S1 cross D2. It's homotopy equivalent to S1, so that's a Z. Direct sum H1 of B. I don't know what that is yet. Well, I'm about to find out because the next thing in the sequence is H1 of S3, which is zero. And anytime you have two zeros on the left and the right, the, thing, the things in the middle are isomorphic. So H1 of B, what was this? This was H1 of S3 minus the neighborhood of K is equal to Z. And the important thing to note here is I did not specify the knot type. This works for any knot. So in conclusion, H1 cannot, let's call it, let's say H1 of S3 minus nu of K cannot distinguish knots. Which is a little bit of a sad story uh, since fundamental group is so successful. Uh, so I should mention, as the last parting note, that this is part of a larger ph phenomena. Uh, here's a theorem. If H from SK to SN is an embedding with K less than N, then HI of SN minus H of SK is equal to, okay, so before I write this down, what what is this mimicking? If K is one and N is three, this is exactly a knot. So there's lots of embeddings of spheres into other spheres. Can homology distinguish them? It cannot because it it's always equal to Z if I is equal to N minus K minus one or zero and it's zero otherwise. And so this H did not factor into the equation whatsoever. Great, so that's gonna do it for today. Uh, now I hope you have some confidence to go and try some Meyer Viatoris examples on your own. Just take any space whose homology groups you know or you can look up and try to chop it up in a bunch of different ways and see if you can recover answers you know or get new answers that you don't know about. Thanks, and I'll see you again next time.